Operation Leprechaun has nothing to do with Ireland. In 1972 and 73, it was the code name for an intelligence gathering operation run in the Miami, Florida area by the IRS. Now, before we get into the details of that, it has to be stressed that the use of undercover agents, be they male or female, for getting information on possible violations of federal tax laws is a traditional procedure in tax investigations. But the problem here is the type of information that my next guest claims the IRS was after and the methods they used in attempting to get it. Elsa Suarez Gutierrez says that she was part of a federal investigation to learn about the sex lives and the drinking habits of 30 prominent Florida residents. Elsa, first of all, welcome. I know you had worked for other federal agencies before you got involved with the IRS, uh, but then finally they recruited you for this Operation Leprechaun. What was Operation Leprechaun? Operation Leprechaun was to consist of gathering information of these 30 prominent citizens in the Miami area, any um, sexual habits, kinky sexual habits, personal life drinking habits, of these persons, anything not tax related, anything on their private life. You didn't think that the information that your superiors were asking you to obtain were tax related? None whatsoever. Uh, well, how did you react when they asked you to come up with some of this really seedy information? Well, when it started, this uh, was before Watergate, you never doubted a uh, federal agency, nor the IRS, nor anybody in the government. You believe what they say. Now you don't. So it was prior to Watergate, and these people were telling you to do this thing, and because Watergate hadn't happened, you, you were listening to them and, and thinking what they were saying was legitimate. Right. Uh, what types of information? Give me some examples of the types of information that your superiors in the IRS had allegedly come up with on these prominent people. They had come up with uh, kinky sexual relations of persons uh, with um, uh, animals, uh, with the people, with other people, uh, different liaisons and... Uh, Affairs they were having, that kind right, of thing? Right, that kind of thing, which is a completely personal life of everybody. What, you know, you don't have to mention their names, but what types of people were these prominent business men and women? There were attorneys judges, circuit judges, the federal judges, and everybody. Now, I understand that they ask you to zero in on one man in particular. Yes. Richard Gerstein, who is still the state's attorney. That's like the district attorney of Dade County in, Mi in the Miami area. Right. Uh, what kind of information did they want to get you to get from Gerstein, and how did they ask you to proceed? Well, after Watergate, they wanted to isolate me from the rest of the group I had, uh, the, the rest of the operative I have recruited, in order just to concentrate on Mr. Gerstein. And uh, they wanted anything on him, anything, a little bit of information about his life, his sexual life, any intimacy, anything about him. I refused because it was against my morale, my principles, and I told Mr. Gerstein, you're stepping, you're stepping on somebody's big toe because you're making a Watergate investigation in the South. He told me, Elsa, I'm doing my job. Okay, I, let me give a little background. Uh, State's Attorney Gerstein in 1972 was one of the first prosecutors to start investigating the Watergate-related right. scandal. Uh, and you're saying that the IRS ordered an investigation of his conduct after he started that Watergate That's investigation. Right, did they ask you to get intimate with Gerstein? Yes. What did you tell them? It was against my morale and my principles. I will not do such a thing. Uh, we're saying they. Who, who are they? Uh, Special Agent Harrison of the IRS Intelligence Division. Uh, what did Special Agent Harrison say to you when you told him you didn't want to get involved with Gerstein in this way? Well, he tried to convince me not, uh, not to think the way I was thinking, that he was right and I was wrong. But my principles are my principles. What do you mean? Well, I, I, I don't meddle in the private life of a person. What, did he tell you that it was all in the national interest, for instance? Yes, it, he told me it was from the highest level. All this had come from the highest level. It was very important for everybody, for the country, for the nation, and 
I said, okay, it might be very important for everybody, but my life and my morale and my principles are one thing, and his private life, it's another. Our next guest, we have another guest who was uh, allegedly involved in this Operation Leprechaun, uh, but she has a much less scandalous interpretation uh, of what the federal government was asking her to find out and how uh, she was supposed to find this information out. Uh, and we'll bring her out right after this commercial message. We'll be right back. Elizabeth Bettner has had a remarkably diverse career, divorced, mother of two. She became well known in the Miami area with her campaign to keep violent textbooks out of the public schools. That led to a brief but unsuccessful career as a losing political candidate, but the experience eventually paid off apparently. One day in a Miami bar frequented by her political contacts, she met a man from the IRS and she was recruited also as an agent for Operation Leprechaun. Welcome, Elizabeth. The first question I have really is really the heart of this matter. Were you asked to spy on the extramarital or other sexual or personal aspects of prominent people's lives? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, it was specified to me. You see, I went to work actually before Operation Leprechaun. I worked for an intelligence gathering unit from 1970 to 73. Right. And uh, never, as a matter of fact, it was mentioned to me not to get involved in any kind of sexual activity, nor did they care about it. The but only thing they were looking for was, you know, they were looking for tax evasion situations and corruptness in government. How many reports did you file to the IRS? I would say approximately 150. 150? Approximately. Uh, on how many different people? would you say? Uh, it could total as close to a thousand, maybe more. A thousand people. different people? Mm hmm Now, of the people that you wrote about in your reports, uh, that, that you either were your targets or that you mentioned in your reports, did you have a personal relationship with any of those people? Uh, I had had personal relationships and friendships with these people for a number of years before I went to work with the IRS. But uh, that never entered into what the IRS requested of me. So you were intimate with some of your, the people that you talked about, but that wasn't relevant, you say, to what you were doing for the IRS? No, it wasn't, because uh, this was strictly a political situation of the fact of politicians who held both anywhere from a city to, say, a state or a United States uh, office who were actively involved in IRS uh, tax evasion or were questionable in their dealings with people in narcotics trafficking major narcotics traffickers in the state of Florida. The best way to explain it to you, Jerry, is the fact when the voter goes to the polls, their constitutions, their constitutional right is to vote for honesty. They should not have to pull that lever for somebody that is going to steal from them, provide bad housing, corruption, everything else and also provide for narcotics. And I'm not talking about normal narcotics. I'm talking about traffickers of heroin. I'm talking about people that is, uh, are making millions of dollars. Let me ask you this, Elizabeth. Uh, I agree with you, and I think virtually everybody, if not everybody, mm -hmm. of course, would agree. I mean, every politician is for honest government, even mm -hmm. if he's the most dishonest man in the country. Uh, <laughs> but how does the fact that uh, a woman judge has sex in her chambers, for instance, uh, relate to her income tax or the honesty of her, the performance of her functions? I don't think, I don't think that's of any interest and I doubt that it, you know, that it was ever asked. Elsa? Uh, I'm sorry, it was asked. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it wasn't asked, it was made as a statement. And a federal agent told you? Yes. Uh, I can only say one thing. Uh, at no time did anyone ask who was having relationships or physical relationships or any situation with anybody. Uh, I think that any woman that has to use her body to gain information 
all right? What? As a IRS informant is in very, very big trouble. Oh, I agree with you. The only thing, I never use my body, I use my brains. Yeah. Elsa, how, how were you expected to get your information? What, what uh, arrangements did they make for you to meet these people? They make, uh, they gave me the membership of, um, they didn't give me, they gave me the money to apply for the membership of three clubs. One of the pe persons who I recruited, they gave the membership of another club, the fees to apply. They provided us with cars, tax, and everything. My work with the government was, I think, very much different possibly than yours. How much were you I, getting paid, Elizabeth? Hmm? How much were you getting paid? I wasn't getting a salary. I had no promises. I was paid expenses after a period of months. Well, how much expenses? Approximately a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars a week, and that was for transportation. I was never provided with the car. I used my own car. Why did um, you do it? Why? For honest government? For honest government and for... <laughs> Perhaps your audience doesn't agree with honest government, but let me ask you they, a question. My audience has lived through some very yeah. dishonest government. Lately. Let me, tell you, let me explain cynical. it to you this way, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very simple thing. This was not a bipartisan situation or a partisan situation. The people that have been indicted and questioned and reported on are both Republicans and Democrats. This is not a Watergate, all right? If you think it's a Watergate, you're wrong. But let me read you a statement that we got today mm -hmm. from the, uh, his name is Leon Levine. He's the public affairs officer for the IRS out of Washington, and he was speaking for the commissioner of the IRS, Donald Alexander. I'll quote, the allegations made indicate reprehensible behavior and they are a direct violation of the IRS code of conduct. Commissioner Donald Alexander has said he would welcome an outside inquiry, perhaps by the Joint Committee on Taxation and Finance. Furthermore, the seven regional directors are under strict orders not to approve any confidential expenditures for information whatsoever. That includes the money they would pay you, so you're out of business, too. Well, no, because I no longer work for the IRS, nor have I worked for them since 1973. But uh, Mrs. Gutierrez, or Ms. Juarez, I forget, Elsa, what your last name is. Um, it's both. Has a number of them. Has uh, stated that uh, she was promised a great number of situations, like retirement, and uh, numerous situations. I c this is beyond me. The federal government, first of all, you were never an employee. You were an informant. Now, you turned your own excuse father. Me, excuse me. In informant are the persons who were a champ. I don't know if you were. I wasn't. No. I was just a cobra. That's the only difference. I was never in a jam. I was a public official, and I held a state and county appointment, and I also was running for public office. Good. But, but what I'm saying is you turned your own father in to the IRS, according to news reports, for $75,000 in tax evasion. Now, how can you sit there and make a statement that you are lily white, clean, pure, when you, in fact, went in the Miami Herald, in the press, you have made a statement, all right? And it is in black and white. And that statement says, I turned in my father. I went to the IRS because they gave me better benefits. Uh, now, how can you sit there and counteract that one? First of all, it's a family quarrel, and I don't think I owe you an explanation. Well, it's in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's, uh, I, you think that the activities of Operation Leprechaun, like uh, Mr. Leon Levine, were reprehensible, and I gather that you think that the allegations, at least, were reprehensible and shouldn't well, I think be. the allegations are not true. I would like to see them presented in front of a Senate committee. That's exactly my I point. would like to see them presented in front of everything with Elsa's name signed. I have already signed my affidavit. The only thing I, I like don't understand is how come... Uh, 
Mrs. Uh, Betzner or Bedner, uh, you never, um, you never came upon Leprechaun until I said so. What kept you away from saying so? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's enough. We've got enough. Uh, you've both come forward and you've both. Uh, yeah, but spoken. I was under threat. She wasn't. What kept her? I would like to say this: the investigation, <laughs> the investigation now being done by the inspectors' division of the IRS which I hope will be investigated by other departments, shows up a very simple fact. You also were uh, turning over information, from what I understand, to Mr. Gerstein. No, and I was not giving information to Mr. Gerstein. What, when Watergate occurred, they put pressure on Mr. Gerstein because he was doing investigation of Watergate in the South. And, Mr. and I just told Mr. Gerstein one thing. That's enough. Mr. Gerstein was Wait a under. No. Wait a second. Wait a second. All right. Uh, we have no more time left for this great debate. Uh, I know it's very entertaining, but I think that uh, both ladies have made their their point and we, we really have to move on. I think that we have to note for the record that the head of the Federal Strike Force in the Miami area has denied for the record ever ordering an investigation into the sex lives or the drinking habits of anyone. His name is Dougal McMillan uh, and he made that denial just before he was transferred uh, to Washington. Uh, in any case, uh, we agree with Mr. Levine and Commissioner Alexander that the best way to get to the bottom of this, we're not going to do it in this kind of debate, is with a full-scale, really, uh, congressional inquiry from one of those subcommittees that handle internal revenue and taxation matters. We'll be right back. Goodbye. Thank you very much for being on. <laughs>